Hey guys, welcome back to the Fly Girl Diary, and today we're going to be getting into the Pilot's Handbook, Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 5, Aerodynamics. So, please return your seats into the upright position, and let's get started. So in my last video, we talked about the principles of flight and how lift is created. Today we're going to get into the four forces of flight and how they interact with each other, as well as other topics covered by chapter five. So we're gonna be talking about the four forces of flight. Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. We have lift, which is upwards, weight, which is downwards, thrust pulls us forwards, and drag pulls us backwards. Now on an airplane in unaccelerated straight and level flight, all these forces are equal, meaning that lift opposes weight and thrust opposes drag. Lift, which we already went over, is controlled by the pilot through airspeed and angle of attack. Weight, which is just the gravity pulling us to the center of the earth. Thrust is created by the propeller pulling us forward, getting the airflow over the wing to create lift. And drag pulls us backwards and can be created in two different ways. So, two different types of drag. We have induced drag and parasite drag. Induced drag is a byproduct of lift, meaning if we are creating lift, we will also be creating drag. Induced drag does decrease with airspeed. Parasite drag increases with airspeed and is caused by things on the airplane itself. So there are three different types of parasite drag. There is interference drag, form drag, and skin friction. Interference drag is caused by angles on the airplane. So you can think of the angle between the fuselage and the wing coming together. The air that's flowing over that gets caught up on itself and creates what's called an eddy. Form drag is created by the shape of the object being pushed through the air. In the, in the example of the book, they have a flat plane, a ball, and an airflow. You see on the book that each object has different airflow patterns behind the object. We do have this on the aircraft. This can happen with any of our antennas, our landing gear if it is fixed, and any other object that's protruding that is not creating lift. We also have what's called the drag curve. So I mentioned that induced drag decreases with airspeed and parasite drag increases with airspeed. Well, we have this handy graph, boom, that does tell us this information. Above this, we have a parabola, which is the total drag curve. And at the bottom of the drag curve is where we have the least amount of drag total. This is where your glide speed will exist for your aircraft. You can manipulate drag in a couple different ways. One of them is ground effect. Ground effect is when you are close to the surface of the ground, the downwash is not as extreme and as a result, induced drag is decreased and total lift is increased. This will cause better performance. We can see this in vortices, which I talked about briefly in the last video. Vortices are when the high pressure below the wing catches up with the pressure above the wing and causes a turbulent vortex behind the aircraft. In cases this happens when your aircraft is heavy, clean, and slow, meaning your big airplanes with landing gear and flaps up flying at slow air speeds. Us as small little student pilots, we want to be careful that we don't fly in those vortices because they do have the energy and the power to flip us over. So to, to avoid this, if we have a large aircraft taking off in front of us, we want to make sure we rotate before the rotation point and fly above their flight path. And vice versa for landings, if we are landing behind a large jet, we are going to touch down beyond their point of touchdown. This ensures that we stay above the vortices and out of the way. Next, we're going to talk about axes of aircraft. So we have three different axes of aircraft. We have our lateral axis, which is wingtip to wingtip, a longitudinal, which is tail to nose, and our vertical, which goes straight down the middle, just like this. <laughs> it's important to note that all three vortices do run through the center of gravity. Now, hold on to the axes for a second, because I'm going to talk about stability, and then I'm going to bring it back into how design characteristics can affect the aircraft. So first we're going to talk about what is stability. Two different types of stability. We have static stability and dynamic stability. Static stability is the initial tendency, and dynamic stability is the tendency of the aircraft over time. We can think of a ball and a bowl. If you take a ball and you put it on the edge of a bowl and you let it go, its initial tendency is to go downwards into the middle of the bowl, and eventually it'll round out and return to its original position at the bottom of the bowl. Negative static stability is think of a ball on a hill. If we were to push a ball off a hill, it would continue to go down the hill and get worse and worse and worse. A neutral stability is a ball on a plane. If we were to push a ball on a plane, it would continue down that path until acted on by an outside force. Next we have dynamic stability. Dynamic stability is a change over time. So, if I were to push the nose down on a dynamic, st <laughs> dynamically stable aircraft, this is how this is what our flight path would look like. 
At first, we would have our initial tendency to change to the original flight position, and eventually, through oscillations, we would. A neutrally dynamic, stable aircraft will just act it on by an outside force. And then finally, and then finally, a negatively dynamic, stable, dynamically stable aircraft is going to continue to worsen over time. Trainer aircraft do have positive static and dynamic stability. This is ideal for design because, of course, when you're starting out, you are not, your skills aren't as uh, you're developing skills in the safe aircraft. So, those three axes of flight and stability, we're going to put them together. So we have, first we're going to go over longitudinal stability. So, nose, <laughs> tail to nose. You can control longitudinal stability based on the position of our center of gravity. So if we have a nose heavy aircraft versus a more aft heavy aircraft, it can affect our longitudinal stability. Lateral stability, remember wingtip to wingtip, is determined by different design characteristics that the engineers made when they actually made the aircraft. Next is dihedral angle, which is the angle of the horizon versus the wing. So if you look on larger jets, the wings will go up like this. We do have that a little bit on our tra most trainer aircraft, even though it is not as dramatic and it's a little bit hard to see. Another design characteristic is the sweep back, meaning on most of our jet, most of the big jets that we see, one of both of the wings are coming pointed back just a little bit like this. So it makes kind of an arrow shape. Location can also affect your lateral stability and keel effect, which effect happens typically more in higher wing aircraft because the center of gravity is positioned lower. The aircraft itself acts like a keel on a boat, or you could think of the rudder on a boat, and keeps it pointing in the right direction or weather vaning in the correct direction. Lastly, we have directional stability, or your yawn. So think turning left to right with your rudder pedals. On most trainer aircraft, all we have is a vertical fin, which is just going to be a little bitty fin on the end of your rudder that helps you maintain directional control or stability in your aircraft. Next we're going to talk about wing planforms. Wing planform is just basically the shape of the wing, it, whether it's a rectangular wing, or more of a triangle shape, or elliptical. Based on the design of the wing, we can control what, where the stall happens. So on a, in our case, we most of the time our wings are rectangular shaped and our stalls happen from the base to the tip of the wing, meaning the whole wing does not stall at once, but does in fact, the stall travels. We will get a little more into stalls here in a second. Hey guys, I found out while I was editing that the video was too long to upload onto YouTube. So I cut it in half and I'm posting the second half. So hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.